Hi, I'm Kathy Baldock, and I'm with Canyon Walker Connections, and I'm going to be writing a second book. And I thought what I'd do is occasionally, every month, try to update what I'm working on, and it'll, be, it'll serve for two purposes, to let you know where I am in the progress, because I'm planning on taking this taking about 12 to 14 months. And the second thing is, if I need your help, if I need input of how to find something or resources, I'm very well connected with all of you, so I can ask. So I'll be working on a follow-up to my book, Walking the Bridges Canyon, but this book will be going uh, both deeper and wider. And to some degree, I'm going to uh, include patriarchy. Over here, Mark, there's uh, some of the stuff that I've been thinking about for the last several months, how pa patriarchy came to be, how it's worked into not only our culture, but uh, certainly within our spiritual and religious experiences. So here is a, a layout of what I'm thinking about with the next book. And how this started, how this project actually started was in, uh, in September, I went to Yale University with my friend Ed Oxford, and it was based upon a question, something that I've been asking. I wondered if the, the revision, the, the 1946 revised standard version of the Bible was the first Bible in any language in any translation that used the word homosexual. <clears throat> the translation team opted to take two Greek words, arsenikoite and malakos, and to combine those words and to use the word homosexual. So while I've been teaching over the last three years since my last book, um, every time I get to that part of my presentation, I've been saying, I really believe that this translation of the word homosexual in 1946, so it had been worked on in the period from the 30s to the 40s, was more ideological and cultural than a theological choice. So my friend at Oxford uh, said to me one day, Kathy, would you like to prove that? And I thought, well, how do I prove that? And he said, all of the papers for Luther Weigel are archived at Yale University because Luther Weigel was the head of the translation team and he was a Dean of Divinity at Yale University. So in September, we went for five days and we dug into those archives and I came up with the answer. Ed and I found the answer. So part of this project started as, maybe I'll write an academic paper, co-author it with a biblical scholar. And then I thought, no, I've been thinking about a lot of things over the last three years and why don't I go deeper and wider in my book and and use the experience and what we found at Yale as kind of an anchor. So Mark just videoed this for me, you know, to show you kind of the direction. This is a sketch. And I know from the experience of working on my last book that this is a sketch and it will probably change as I work. But I'm gonna be looking at the, not only the old translations, Ed has an incredible, um, wealth of old books and manuscripts he's been collecting since the 1500s. And so we're going to go through the Bible translations of the sections of scripture dealing with same-sex behavior from those Bibles and then looking at them in modern translations. So I'm looking at the translation teams. So one of the first things I've worked on is to say who is still alive on these translation teams. And I've reached out to friends to find who I can talk to, to have real conversations about when you got to this section of scripture, what did you do? And so that's where I am. And I'll be updating you again next month. And in all likelihood, this will have morphed. This will have changed. But I'm very excited to be able to tell this story and to tell, to, as I said, to anchor it through the story of what we found out at Yale, which was riveting, actually. And then to talk about some other some other things, uh, patriarchy, gender hierarchy, and I read on both sides of the equation. Today I just got another book in the mail, and this one is, uh, the Gospel Coalition recommended this one, and it's their book of the year, and six verses from Timothy, First Timothy are telling me how uh, women in the church are supposed to behave, so I read from both sides of these equations, so follow me on this journey, and I'm also looking for financial support, if you wanna be a monthly donor, a one-time giver, Join me. Thanks a lot. Bye.